But that, that whole thing of not putting pressure on me, but working on herself, motivated me to want to work on myself. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if it feels hopeless right now. Hey there, I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about the five-day Adored Wife Challenge. And the man panel continues. My guest, Tim, is the husband of a podcast guest, a student, and a coach. And I'm going to get his perspective on the changes in his family that happened as a result of his wife practicing the six intimacy skills along with the connection framework. So get ready to hear the male perspective on what makes men attracted to their wives and want to be her hero. All that's coming up, but first let's talk about how to become an adored wife with the five-day adored wife challenge. If you have been listening to the podcast, well, for any length of time, really, you've heard a thing or two about the six intimacy skills, and I have a confession to make about them. When I first heard them, I thought they sounded stupid. I remember thinking, I am not going to do that. I thought they were old fashioned and also just plain yucky. And the intimacy skills challenged my view of the world so much that I nearly dismissed them. I was filled with contempt prior to investigation. I had all kinds of misgivings about even trying them as an experiment because I thought if I apologized for being disrespectful to my husband, that was a step back for all womankind. And that's just not how I was raised. Or if I expressed gratitude to him for something that he should be doing anyway, that would be like me turning into a, a Stepford wife robot. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to do that. And it's not just me. I remember one student said, well, I'm not going to throw him a parade because he helped the kids with their homework. And even master coach Kathy Murray uh, said, well, I'm not going to stroke his ego when I invited her to express gratitude. Well, samesies. Good thing I was so desperate, or I probably never, ever would have experimented with the six intimacy skills. Because once I tried them, the light went on and I saw things so differently through my new perspectacles. Yes, the intimacy skills are counterintuitive. But also, they're so compelling. I got excited about them, and I got excited about the way I felt when I started using them. Not to mention, my husband responded to me so much better. I didn't think that was going to happen. But then, I actually tried them. And these days, I'm always scheming and conspiring to create opportunities for every woman to try them out, just as an experiment in case they might work for her too. And that's why we started the five-day Adored Wife Challenge. And at the last one, I was so impressed to see so many of you grabbing the training with both hands and sharing your incredible results. I could just feel the momentum everyone was getting from all of us doing the same thing at the same time. It was so inspiring. And that's why I love the challenge so much. And it's time for the five-day Adored Wife Challenge again. And if you haven't joined before, it's where I'm going to show you a specific cheat phrase or action each day for five days. And that's going to give you a chance to practice the powerful six intimacy skills along with the magical connection framework with several thousand other courageous women. And it's free and it only happens once a year. And this is one of those times. And no matter what things are like at your house, this is going to renew your hope for your marriage. So if your marriage is the worst it's ever been, well, first of all, that's so discouraging to be in that place. I still remember. But I hope you'll find the courage to join the challenge because you're going to discover that you're not alone with your marriage problems. And it's going to demonstrate that you can single-handedly transform your marriage without his conscious effort. I'm going to give you my best stuff that my most successful students and I have used to make our marriages last and the coaches have used to make their marriages last and thrive. 
And then we're going to all be taking action together. And this is all happening next week. And then we're going to share the results inside of our exclusive, private, sacred circle space. It's our community where we're there celebrating each other and talking about the intimacy skills. And it's not going to be in Facebook. This is a, a private community where you can be completely anonymous and there's no stalking. No one can stalk you. No one can spam you. So it feels really safe. And you can join by going to lauradoyle.org slash challenge. You can join right now because the week before the challenge, you'll be able to listen in on the certified coaches who are going to come on and share their personal stories of how they fixed their broken marriages. If you're a ridiculously happy wife student or a diamond student or a coach or even an alumni, we're going to be doing the challenge together in your circle. So there's no need to register for the challenge. You can you can join in and I'll be there live inside your circle, right? So, but if you you know, if you haven't been one of those kinds of students and you want to participate, then you definitely need to go and register at lauradoyle.org/challenge. So, and yeah, you might be surprised to learn that even the coaches enjoy doing the five-day Adore Wife Challenge because we all like to be refreshed and, and invigorated. Coaches need that as much as anybody. I mean, I know I do. It's sort of like Zig Ziglar said, right? That people complain that motivation wears off like bathing. And that's why we recommend it daily. So this is a chance to get motivated, to get inspired. And day one is going to be all about the indispensable first step to having a lasting, thriving marriage. And if you do this step, you're going to be surprised at how simple it is to create a happy transformation in your marriage between you and your husband over just 24 hours. I'm not even kidding. I'm even going to share with you the moment that I saw this happen in my own marriage when I first started doing this indispensable step. In fact, during this challenge, I'm going to share the exact framework that I used to make my marriage last and, and that I've taught to tens of thousands of students who maybe didn't feel loved or they were fighting all the time or they felt like their marriage problems were landing on their kids, were hurting those kids. And they were able to use this framework to make their marriages last and thrive also. And the only requirement to join the challenge is that you have a desire to be an adored wife. I had that desire and now I'm an adored wife. So if that resonates with you, then this challenge is going to be incredibly valuable for you and it's completely free. And I'm so inspired and impressed by the caliber of women who joined the last five day challenge. I saw posts on day one from women who were sharing so vulnerably, so personally, that they were feeling hopeless. And this was their last ditch effort so that they could say they tried everything before they maybe ended their marriages. And that is some impressive courage when you're feeling that low to take an action like joining this challenge. I, I've also seen women in their women who are so committed to trying to fix their marriages even though there was an affair happening and he was living with the other woman or, or marriages with abuse and addiction, marriages where she's hurting so much, she's wondering how she can keep going as a mere mortal woman. And I remember how awful that felt. And there are longtime students in the challenge also. And those there are coaches whose marriages are going strong, whose marriages are great. And they like the reminder. They like the lift it gives them to do the challenge because it turns out the intimacy skills are pretty fun to practice. So are you in? Yeah? Good. Same Z's. I'll see you in the five-day Adored Wife Challenge. Does it feel like you can fix everything except for your marriage? For the last two decades, I've had the privilege of helping thousands of women create more connection, passion, and deep conversations in their marriages. I even wrote the book on becoming the empowered wife. Ultimately, I'm on a mission to end world divorce. That's why I'm hosting a free 
five-day adored wife challenge to help you repair and refresh your marriage fast. Best of all, your man doesn't even need to participate. Over those five days, you're going to learn the daily action that you were taking, probably subconsciously, that might be killing your intimacy. And I'm going to show you a small but powerful change that you can make today that will supercharge the passion and the connection. Plus the simple magic cheat phrase that will completely shift your man's perspective. And I'm going to show you why your selflessness might be putting your marriage at risk. Plus, I'm going to show you the four indispensable elements of a happy relationship and how to get them. This free event only happens once a year. And trust me, you don't want to miss it. All you have to do to participate is go to lauradoyle.org slash challenge and register and save your spot. That's lauradoyle.org slash challenge. Go right now, save your spot. And I can't wait to see you at the free five-day Adored Wife Challenge. And the man panel continues. My guest, Tim, is the husband of a podcast guest and a certified Laura Doyle relationship coach. And I'm going to get his perspective on the changes in his family as a result of his wife practicing the six intimacy skills with the connection framework. So get ready to hear the male perspective on what makes men attracted to their wives and what makes him want to be her hero. Tim, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. I'm so excited to have you on the show yeah, today. This is this is big. This is really uh I've heard about you and Kathy almost uh every day from Sandy. I don't get to hear about details of what you talk about. I broad strokes, but just uh huge impact. I mean, no uh no uh premeditated thought other than just gratefulness for what you guys have done. Oh, thank you so much. What a great way to kick off our interview here. Yeah. I definitely am interested to hear about everything that went on at your house and and your impression of things and how it impacted you. So uh, first of all, how long have you been married? Uh, 35, we just celebrated 35 years. 35 years. So, Congratulations. Yeah. That's a uh, big accomplishment. Most, most of it's happy marriage, uh, 35 years of marriage, but uh, more and more of it's getting happier as we go along. So, <laughs> well, that's good to hear. So um, what would you say? I know it sounds like it's been mostly a great marriage and I mean, every no marriage is perfect. We all have our issues, you know, we all have our issues. Yeah. What would you say was the biggest uh, point of contention or conflict that you guys were having? Well, I, uh, wow. Let's, you just like, let's just dive <laughs> right like, in Hello. Here. There's no, there's no warning. <laughs> just die. Okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's uh, just be vulnerable <laughs> here just for the, sake of the other folks that uh, would participate in this. Um, we we actually had a pretty good marriage. Uh, she's a firstborn. She's uh, she likes uh, she she like like me, I'm infatuated with my own opinion. And um, so and she would express that a lot. And um, sometimes I just felt like it was like a critical review of me and I'm just trying to work hard and provide for the family and this and that. And so I would feel that from her and I would, I would not respond well. I would react to that reaction. And so we just feed on each other like a, in, in a vicious cycle. We come back around because of a agreement we made early on is like, we can't go to bed upset with each other. We've got to talk it out. And um, we've, we've had some late nights. <laughs> Um, so, but, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, just, um, really feeling her criticism of me and what I'm trying to do and the way I'm trying to solve problems. And then I overreact to that and, and then the vicious cycle begins. I, um, I love your pledge to never go to bed angry. I love Phyllis Diller's quote about that too, was, which is, uh, Never go to bed angry. Stay up and fight was her thing. And that, that was what I related to in my marriage is like, we have to stay up and, and argue about it. <laughs> we couldn't quite get it to the resolution. So, but it sounds like that actually has, has that been a good strategy to 
the yeah, not I shouldn't yeah, say it, step and fight, but well, no, have I mean, you made that, it work? That's, that's what it is. It's uh, you know, it's like we we bring it like to a boxing ring, and we both neither one of us can throw on the towel. We have to stay in the ring, and sometimes we just stay in the ring and look at each other, look at each other, not talk. You know, there's and um, uh, usually one of us uh, is the leader that picks up the other one to carry them. You know, and sometimes it's Sandy towards me or me towards Sandy. Um, so it always takes one of us kind of initiating. Uh, I think it's some humility. You know, frankly, it's, it's, you know, okay, I, I, I own what I did and I really want to, I want to make it better. I don't want to do that again. And then we begin to talk through it and it helps out quite a bit. So a lot of accountability has been there all along. It kind of sounds like. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean, I mean, it's, we've had, we've had some dark times in our marriage, um, and I think Sandy talked about some of that on a podcast she did with you uh, a year or two ago. And, um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not without, I mean, we love each other more now than before. I'm looking forward to the next 10 years, 20, 30 years. I want to do adventures with her and I want to hang out with her, especially with uh, the work that you all have helped her do that's directly benefited me, you know, makes me want to get after things myself. So really, okay. I, I, I love that. And I want to hear some more about that. So uh, I have so many questions. So, yeah. um, but let's just, let's, I, I do. I, and I love that you're sharing so vulnerably about that. There's been dark times because, it's something you don't get to see very much, right? On Facebook, everyone's family looks very happy and perfect. And um, it's just been so helpful to me. And I know so many other women that we get to talk about, you know, like I, I talk about, you know, I spent over a year in marriage counseling and then we nearly got divorced. And wow. so, but let's, I would just love to hear. Um, so, I mean, was there, was there a particular time that you remember you think thought like, well, this is, this is, we can't go on like this in our, our marriage. Yeah, it's, um, I was like a bull in the China cabinet. And um, one of 11 kids, uh, I'm not the firstborn, but I'm the fourthborn, which kind of is like another firstborn. And so, uh, you know, it, it would be, it, you know, we'd have our, our positions. And then a lot of times in trying to be honest and open, I didn't want to be mean spirited, but I conveyed that not realizing. I remember I was doing a conference uh, down in Brazil and there's this guy by the name of Miles Monroe. There's no longer with us, but just like a statesman, just an amazing communicator. And he'd written some books on men and women. And we were talking and he says, Tim, always remember that women speak and understand in the language of emotion men and, and this is a, a broad this doesn't apply to every situation but men speak and understand the name of, you know in, in, in the, the language of logic and so i would just logically throw these heave these huge balls of ugliness at her and thinking, well, I'm just being honest. Let's be, you know. And so I wouldn't hardly give her room to 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 breathe. And so I I know what I did in it. And um, what's interesting is I knew what to do, but I didn't always do it. And sure, it really took a lot of initiation on Sandy's part. I'm very grateful for her to begin to practice these skills and um I've, I've got some really funny stories on me wanting to help her with that which was not a good idea oh, oh tell <laughs> us about that let's hear about that so we're we're doing this um you know and i uh i believed in her wanting to do the the program enough to where i okay it's half and half you know i you, you come up with that, you know, it's all both of our accounts, but I wanted to invest from my company into this thing. 
And uh, she's going through it. She's working with uh, a coach, but I think a coach by the name of Rebecca, but I'm not, I, I, I just seem like I remember that name. And uh, they like, they were working on uh, her learning the first skill, which is learning to care for yourself um, and uh, self-care. And I remember uh, she had one of the books and you had something about marriage counselors and it was, you know, it's just the disaster that happens in marriage counseling, which I've experienced, that, you know. Uh, and uh, so I remember she went to bed and I stayed up and I got the book and I burned through it. I got up early and I burned through it. And just, it was like, I wanted to know what this world was and who this Laura Doyle that I heard about every day. And um, she started talking about something and then I interjected, I say, well, really, on in this book, Laura says this, this, and this. I just have a memory to, re, you know, to re, like I do exact quotes of things. And uh, that went over uh, very poorly. I was just trying to help her, you know, I was just trying to help her. And, uh, and but, uh, you know, husbands, if there's any husbands that ever listen to this, they don't, your wife does not need another coach. <laughs> you know? So you've got enough coaching going on. Uh, just be there to support and love her and pursue her. And uh, so I, I like to uh, chase my wife around until she catches me. That's, that's <laughs> my philosophy. So anyway, so that was, it was just kind of like, too. so I agreed not to read any of your book. I was tempted, <laughs> but I burned through it. I just like, oh, this is really awesome. And, and it's like, this is the first lady that I read about that like gets me of who I am as a man without condemning me. And so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm in on this. So uh, that, that, that was kind of a secret sauce to me that uh, just really convinced me to encourage Sandy to invest in this is like, you got us and you didn't condemn us as men. Uh, and it's like, oh my uh, God. Uh, that's huge. I can't say enough about that. Wow. Gosh. Yeah. We love and respect and appreciate men around here. That is for sure. And I'm glad that that came through. I think you are, uh, I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm delighted that you're in the book, but I'm also, I mean, I feel like it's kind of unusual because, uh, I think, I mean, well, we, one of the things we suggest for wives in the beginning is like, just maybe keep it to yourself for a while, kind of just get your bearings and figure out what fits for you because it, because it can be kind of uncomfortable for him to know what you're supposed to be doing. And what if you're not doing it exactly right yet? Right. And then it can come up. I agree. I did agree not <laughs> to quote you or remind her of you. And I, I remember these <laughs> six of them and I, I think I can probably quote them out. Not exactly, but uh, you know, I just remember things, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you were into it. I I mean, no, I love it. I, I think it's, it's, it, was, it says it was so, so much about the commitment and the commitment to your marriage, right. That you were just, yeah. you wanted to do your part. It sounds like, and yeah. know what was going on and uh, yeah. be a support for your wife. It, it was, it was, it was odd as she got into it as with working with a coach and she, it was amazing how miraculous the self-care as she began to do that, how that transformed our relationship. But it's, it's, it's so interesting that as she's working on this, I go, well, honey, what am I supposed to do? You know, what I, I want to make sure that, you know, I do whatever I'm supposed to. And it's like, it, it's, it's, it's such a, uh, it can be misunderstood so easily, but it's like, look, we're not, we're not, we're not going through a list of what men have to do. We're just going to present ourselves and live a happy life ourselves. And it's like, oh, it just relieves so much pressure off of me, <laughs> you know, to think that I had to do all this stuff. And, uh, but, it, but it, it really helped me out in that it like, it didn't condemn me. Uh, it didn't give me a list of everything I needed to do. Sandy and I still talk through things here. We sometimes I'm looking around. There's this thing about the paper and 
And so sometimes I'm looking around and say, well, where's my paper? Oh, Sandy. Oh, you're reading it. Talk. So th this <laughs> years ago, uh, this is, now this is the Laura Doyle language here that, you know, I, if the listener's not used to it and, and I don't, I don't know it entirely except I've read it a little bit, but it's like, uh, Oh, okay. The way that, that's, you got my paper. Okay. So let me, let me have my paper back. And then I'm not going to read my, your paper to you. So, but that, that whole thing of not putting pressure on me, but working on herself motivated me to want to work on myself. Okay. Oh my gosh. That that's like a wisdom bomb right there. I want to just like linger on that. So her not pressuring you to change who you are or how you were showing up, that was inspiring. You you made you want to show up differently, yeah. better. I mean, I'm used to like okay, you know, what's, what, what did I do wrong? What, you know, how did I hurt you? Cause again, too, I'm, you know, I'm seven boys, mostly boys growing up, you know, this large family, I was athletic, you know, I was a wrestler, like, like contact and, uh, you know, and, uh, there's this very masculine, but like, one, yeah. one of my favorite books is uh, leadership and self-deception and, uh, by this, this group. And then another one is, uh, um, uh, the anatomy of peace. And it talked about how so many people are like at war with the world around them. And I found myself being at war. And so Sandy would come in and I would just re over re like, like we're in a battle. And it's like, you know, her initiating kind of that emotional um, environment it like it, it didn't just tell me the way it showed me the way just to calm down it was really helpful so mm -hmm. i know i may sound weak I, and i don't care i just i just know what she did in practicing you know what what you guys talk about and it really made a difference so oh gosh it, it doesn't sound weak at all it sounds uh, just very authentic and and actually courageous kind of the opposite of weak because to admit something yeah to admit this is the ideal that I want is to live in peace and I'm finding myself at war with the world is uh, I just admire that accountability and, and the, even just the examples you're describing, right? Like feeling, feeling defensive when your wife comes into the room, what did I do wrong? And you mentioned you went to marriage counseling previously. And I don't know if that came up there. If, you know, if there were things you were supposed to change in marriage counseling, I mean, that's pretty typical. Yeah. We we had a we had a, a couple of marriage counselings that we didn't last very long. I removed us from. I said I'm not going to participate with that. I don't. I'm not motivated. There's not. You know. It's like I don't mind getting challenged. And uh, we did have a very skillful uh, marriage counselor. It wasn't even his main job. His main job is he's an expert at group dynamics and getting extreme. Um, people stuck in extreme addictions and vice to uh, untangle and, and lead a normal life. He's like an expert at that, but his, his, his secret passion was this marriage stuff. And so he would, you know, a lot of the same things he would use with his patients and, you know, the, the people that were hurt themselves, you know, the, the addicted, the addictions, um, he would apply those to us really just own your own stuff, you know, and so it was, it was really healthy in that regard, but um, yeah, the, the, the marriage counseling usually created more havoc and I, you know, I just, you know, Sandy really struggled with uh, getting involved with uh, your program, but as she leaned into it uh, and she began to practice these things, I knew to give her grace because I would see it, you know, and I would, you know, I, we'd talk it through and, and I just knew from that one mistake I made not to coach her in anything, but just to be with her, which is, I'm learning to do that better. Um, but it just, the, the whole thing of, uh, of just her working on her own happiness and her working on 
showing up in a in a dignified. She talks about showing up with dignity, and I I'm I'm sure that's one of the things you guys talk about, or or that's what that's what she says. It it's huge. It it it's like it shifts the environment, the emotional environment that we're communicating, and just as like relieves it. It's just like you know, a lot of times I'm coming in from a day of work and I'm just, you know, conquering the world and taking on things and it's like a war. And then, you know, sometimes I don't turn that off and she just helps me calm down, calm down with that. So it's like your soft place to land. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Just even, even coming home used to be like, she's overwhelmed. She has a tougher job. She's like raising these kids more traditional i'd work all day and she she would work a lot too but you know but she cleaning up the house and getting this ready and doing all that just i'd go insane you know she'd leave town and for two days and i'm like oh, this is, i love you i worship the ground you stand but um it's <laughs> yeah. leave a, a lot of work in her wake it sounds oh my God. like that but, but i you know I, i'd come in and there would be tents and then just even now we're going through some pretty challenging times. I'm going through a couple challenging times in, in uh, two, two of the businesses that I run. And uh, she's, she's just the, the way she carries herself just gives me freedom to let my hair down, be vulnerable and just be open. And we're really talking through things. And so, um, Anyways, it's it's really been good. Uh, it sounds it sounds um, it sounds really sweet. It sounds romantic. It sounds it sounds heavenly. That's that's another thing. I mean, it's just like the understanding that that you and Kathy and this program has with men is like you know that's like a very important part of my life. But if if I'm in conflict with somebody, it kind of like drains the the drive and desire there and so now there's something that's a very important part of who i am to help me function and to conquer and to go after things you know that's like i'm in conflict and so i it, you know that part is just like suppressed and it's it makes it very difficult and it puts it just if women would understand how important that is to men um and uh, Sandy was concerned I'd get into something like this, but <laughs> you know, she she's just so responsive to that, and it's just been uh, it's been huge, just again, really huge. Just wow! You know, oh, yeah. I love that. I mean, and let's shout out to Sandy right now because it's a very yeah. vulnerable and brave thing that she passed on my invitation to be on the show to you. She's yeah. taking a big risk, right, about yeah. no, you I'm sharing yeah. these intimate details with us, which I'm just so grateful for. But I also see, anyway, I just, thank you, Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> I know we're she's going to hear. Through, we work through stuff. But, you know, things come up and, you know, we have to work through it. And, uh, you know, I'm still wanting to conquer the world. So I bring that in, you know, and so it's like, uh, you know, we have to work work at things we sometimes we have to switch from what we're talking about to how we're talking you know tone that down a little bit just so we're back together and um and so we we, we still have these moments where it's like gosh it's 35 years you'd think we'd have it down by now but i'm determined to live a, a an adventurous fun loving life with my wife and not anybody else. And uh, and so the work that she's done has really made that that much easier. Oh, it's fantastic. So it sounds like you noticed her doing more self-care, doing more happy stuff, the things that made her happy. That, 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 that was huge. That was huge because she didn't believe that she was deserving or worthy of it. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted what you were oh, saying. Oh no, I think I think that is exactly what stands between I know I know that was for me too. That was that was the barrier to doing more frivolous fun, I like to call it. What other changes did you notice in your wife after she started practicing skills, intimacy skills? 
Okay, here's one that um, I think, I, ho I hope she doesn't mind if I share this. She was going through and she did like a, like a, just a wife that wants help as an individual coach. And then she signed up for your coaching program. And I was very supportive of that. I invested with her on that. And um, these meetings would just last quite a while. And there would be such time to listen to somebody, reflect back at somebody and just, and she's like, oh my gosh, these meetings take so long. I, you know, they just cover it so quickly, not realizing that that method of communication is part of the magic. And what has happened is when I come in and talk about something, a lot of times she just jump in there and, you know, give me her viewpoint. And I would just like, okay, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll go and play the turtle. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to argue. Clam up. I yeah. don't need to share stuff. I can go into a cave and I'm fine there, you know, but we, you know, you want to talk more and all this kind of stuff. So, um, but she would slow it down, listen, say back to me things. And sometimes I say, yes, Sandy, that's just what I said. Just kind of like kidding around on that. But that slowing down the communication Here's what's happened. It's helped us in our communication because I'm learning that. I'm a guy. I know I can slow way the heck down and just, you know, not like, because my mind goes fast and I've got the solution. I'm ready to apply it. Let's get her done. Yeah. And uh, so, but I've seen her talk to my kids and some of them believe different than the way she does or process is very different. And I've seen her, instead of trying to persuade them, I saw her just showing up, being with them and celebrating, not agreeing, but celebrating where they're coming from. Mm. And that's a huge skill level is to celebrate where some, to understand where somebody's coming from doesn't mean you are espousing that and supporting that you're supporting the person and giving them freedom to talk. And I have seen her just this week. One of my sons had just a disaster in a relationship and it was just, I mean, it was like world war three going on. And uh, it's interesting. Both of them called on her, you know, my son called on me a little bit and, you know, and, and asked for some, you know, we talked through things, but they called on her and her, she meeting with them and just slowing down and doing that whole thing. They felt heard and they felt listened to. And it's this thing that sneaks up on you and, and by listening and being with you empower that person to make a decision for themselves. And, I've seen her bring healing into my relationship with her uh, kids, uh, four of our kids. We got four very above average kids. Uh, you know, they also are very infatuated with their own opinion. <laughs> you know, so the fireworks begin uh, helping working with uh, family, other family members and just using that same thing that used to drive her a little bit crazy now she's incorporating that as part of her communication. And it's just, she's like a heal. I like to say, I teach on leadership a lot. I said leaders are healers. And she has been the leader that has brought healing in just by her listening skills. So, wow, I have chills. She has a superpower to it, heal. It is amazing. That's, and that's did you say that, so your son and your, and then your, his his significant other both reached out to her for yeah yeah it's so just, like her like a daughter in law or or your son's yeah, girlfriend yeah, daughter daughter in law uh -huh. daughter in law I mean yeah. whose daughter in law yeah. reaches out to their mother in law when there's a breakdown yeah. I in hope me mention this is not to but they they were working things out and and they 
beautifully worked it out. Um, just it, it should have taken weeks and months and they worked it out between themselves in a matter of days. Both sides very courageous. Um, and it, you know, I'm not saying this is all because of Sandy. I'm just saying Sandy played her role to get them to feel listened to and empowered to look at their their situation from a point of, well, what can I do to improve that? Amazing. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And I, I'm just really struck by all the admiration I hear from you yeah. for your wife. Oh, and yeah. I, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not even an emotional guy. Here I am. Everybody cries on your show, though, right? <laughs> uh, this is unexpected. You know, she... She has made me her hero. And uh, so that's that's helpful. Um, even when I don't deserve it. But, you know, she has become my hero. Uh, and watching her, uh, you know, I, I know how her brain naturally goes. I know how she's done in the past. And she's always been a wonderful woman and very caring person but just with these skills it just is it's like these super skills at work uh she's really really uh, brought a lot of healing in and just really become my hero too so yeah you hit a nerve when you said yeah she's i do have tremendous admiration for her yeah, Especially all the all the pain that she's gone through, all that she processes, and how she looks at it, and then it's just like she's got super skills now on even how to process those things. Amazing. I mean, this is the way you're talking about your wife. I, I mean, I think that's what every woman wants to hear from her husband is that level of admiration, and just um, you just sound very in love with her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Things are going good, and I'm just I'm 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 big on very looking forward every day, and just the future is, you know, we're working through some challenges on some things here, but I'm just so optimistic that you know my future is getting bigger and brighter and and, and better, and just. With, with my relationship with my wife. So that way. And and how have you changed him? Do you think you've changed since oh, as yeah. a result? I mean, she's not the same Sandy, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's you know, I mean she's she's already a wonderful woman. I mean I married a wonderful woman here, but it's like you get behind the things and you know, uh the little things become magnified and that becomes the main thing that you you know, you notice, but, um, you know, uh, a leader doesn't just tell the way they show the way and a leader sometimes has to initiate leaders initiate and they have to carry the other person. Um, it's lopsided maybe, and it's not a, a martyr. It's not a arrogancy, a, not a, you know, I, you know, I'm needed here. You know, it's, it's not that it's a very humble, sobering moment to really be a leader in that way. But, you know, she, she is, she has shown me the way she didn't just tell me the way. And, uh, she demonstrates the kind of communication she would like for me to give her without asking me. And, uh, so I don't know that I've changed a, a whole lot, uh, I know I I I hope she feels my pursuit of her. Uh, you know, I like I like to chase her around until she catches me, and um, and that that's something I got from my great great grandmother from Ireland. But by the way, sorry <laughs> where that came from. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's it's. Um, I I hope I'm easier to talk to. I hope I I'm slowing down the conversation enough, not to rush to 
have to solve things and fix things. That's how guys, you know, we, we feel better when we're fixing stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. No, I love that. Um, I mean, that's another thing that I think all women desire is their husband's pursuit. And so I hear, I hear that's, that's happening at your house. <laughs> so you're really getting off pursuit of your wife, um, which is, that's, I mean, it's pretty great after 35 years to still have the, the fireworks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, that's good. It's good. And it, it's, you know, there's, there's things we have to deal with. We're both very strong willed, opinionated people that are, have strong personalities. You know? So we, you know, we, I mean, there's, there's a reset usually once or twice a week at least, you know? <laughs> oh, and, sure. Yeah. It's not, yeah. I'm not, we're not the Facebook, everything's happy and perfect. You know, I don't, I don't look at Facebook a lot because <laughs> I know how miserable some people are that I talk to, you know, one on one. It looks like everything's together. So it's, yeah, it's great. It's, it, have happy, happy pictures and share those. That's not, not a Well, that's along those lines, was there anything you felt like you lost um, after Sandy started practicing skills, intimacy skills? Ah, that's an interesting question, Laura. Is there anything I lost? Um, anything you missed about the. Old ways. Well, I mean, let, let me just think through it here. Self-care. So she cares for herself. She's more able to, she's got bandwidth to, to care for me. Um, gratitude. She does these rituals of gratitude. There's this one thing on, on this. Well, gratitude, she, she has a practice she does every day and just gets her into a mode and then uh, you know, feeling respecting towards me. And I don't know if, you know, the uh, learning to receive from me, that's a huge deal. I used to like just buy her gift card. I just got to, I just bought her gift cards. And now I'm out shopping around and creatively, you know, getting stuff that's, you know, it's, uh, I don't always get it right, but she's celebrating <laughs> You know, the effort uh, it's a lot better than a gift card why are you only giving me a gift card well because i really don't want the uh you know this process of taking something back let's just go out shopping together so just her learning to receive and and uh, relinquishing control i don't know if i'm getting them all but i'm just <laughs> you are and just, it's uh, scary tim you're getting them all <laughs> like you know control is uh was huge and she catches herself in that. And then, hey, I'll let you decide. I don't trust that. You know, I'm still <laughs> still fairly new. Uh, and then uh, being vulnerable, you know, I'm, I, I think we've had that before. So what have I lost? I, I don't, I don't I mean, lost in terms of negative thing. I don't know, Laura, that I've lost anything in our relationship, I, I, uh, you know, it's not perfect all the time, but it's like, it's, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to like overemphasize a skill so much that it almost seems inauthentic. It, it's, it's that powerful where it's a, it's a, it's a, a script or uh, values from which to script your life and, uh, and how you, like it, it, it governs the way you you operate, and I I don't know if there's anything that on the negative I miss. There's a lot of things that on the positive that we don't have as much anymore. So, I yeah. love that. That that's a great <laughs> that's a great answer. I guess just for the sake, I, I mean, the reason I asked that question is because I think it is a fear that um, you know I know I walked into the intimacy skills thinking. Well, my husband's not going to like, not, I don't know, not always hearing my opinion, <laughs> you know, when I, if I don't help him or if I, if I don't do as much as I used to do uh, and things like that. So that's, that's kind of what I was, I was wanting to check on. And I, I don't. Yeah. I think as you mentioned that I, I, uh, sometimes I know that she's got an opinion 
and she's got a real desire because she's saying, okay, Tim, you decide. And so it's like, well, I don't, you know, I take, you know, I, I have fun and doing stuff and in the moment and I'm not, you know, I don't have all these huge demands got to be done this way and that way. And, and so, you know, so sometimes that's, you know, I just have to, I'm still working through that. And she's developing her skills on that, you know, where I really feel like, okay, yeah, it really is my decision. You know, um, sometimes I'm like, well, if I ask, I mean, I think I want to do this, but if I did this, how happy would you be doing that or going there or eating there, you know? <laughs> you still want to know her desires. You want to yeah, know what yeah, makes her I, happy. I, uh, um, you can't just, you can't make her decisions without that information. Here, that, that's, the, that's the first thing, by the way. That's the first thing is like, and when I say you guys get, it's like that you understand that men want to please their wives, even with all this ruckus and this, this negative energy and all this, uh, these arguing and, you know, lack of intimacy and, 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 and that's something that plagues so many of our marriages, but just that you understood that and you're, and you're training the, you know, your, your clients and your, uh, you know, the people part of your community, just that that's really the truth. That really is the truth, you know? So I, I that's, how that's, important is it to you, Tim, that Sandy's happy? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, I, I don't, it's not like I think about her a lot, you know, I know that's horrible. This <laughs> you know, I'm just I like, I'm into whatever I'm learning or solving, or I'm just into my day. And so I'm having to, sometimes I've actually put little ticklers, Hey, give Sandy a text or give her a call in the middle of the day. Uh, Cause I'm kind of head down and getting after it. Um, but it's, it's uh, just knowing that, um, uh, she, she's okay. And, and, uh, knowing that, uh, she's, she's filling herself up and, you know, but, but I, I do, I do want to, I, I, I lost the turn of thought, but I just, I know I do want to see her happy and it's easier for me to feel like I can do that now. And, uh, and I don't, I don't even know if we landed where we started. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, yeah. It, it sounds like you've always wanted her to be happy. That's, that's a priority for you. And now you feel more successful at that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, that's, yeah. If women would understand that if they can make us feel like we're successful, even in the effort, you know, the actual, End product may be a, a D minus, but <laughs> if they can see that the effort is there and that that emotional affirmation is like is like oxygen to us, you know, it's like it really feeds us. It really helps us out. And even if it seems mechanical and awkward and I, I know what she's doing and, but I got to give her grace. Sometimes I give her a hard time, <laughs> with it, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and sometimes I'll play the voice of Laura Doyle or Kathy. I, I, I don't even know what Kathy's last name. I just know it's coach Kathy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Kathy Murray. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I just, uh, but, um, you know, she says she talks, she talks about some of what she's learned from y'all and it's just that she, you know, she's, she's really learning how to, um, give me what I need so I can really, I, I feel empowered to give her what she wants out of the marriage. Right. Awesome. Wow. So inspiring. So, and, and what's your marriage like right now? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's good. I, I you know, um, I, <laughs> it's overall, it's like hugely better. And we have times of great talks and intimacy and in ways that both of us are very satisfied in that. And, um, 
you know, where I'm, I'm working through some things on, you know, one of the things is I, you know, I look for businesses to buy and fix and turn around. And I bought a business that was just, <laughs> just uh, like I got taken, but, you know, and so sometimes I'll get onto myself with that and I'll bring that in our relationship. And so that's created some things for us to manage, but, um, we're managing it better. And she's, she's helping me manage it better. We just had a talk yesterday morning where I just was really vulnerable with her on just processing some things and some decisions. And, and she goes, Tim, it's, it, you know, it's not a mistake. It's a learning opportunity. You know, it's like, here's, here's, here's what we're going to do. What we're going to learn from it is much more than what it's costing us. And it's very expensive, you know, it's, <laughs> it's very, very expensive. So, and so, but we're, you know, turning around and turning that thing around. I actually got really good news even today and looking at the financials. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I, I hope I didn't get lost in your question. It's, it's, you know, our marriage is great. It, it really is good. I, I look forward to seeing her. Um, I know that if we're in a, a, you know, a negative mode that both of us can pop out of that and meet together and connect better. And uh, so we're, it's, you take care of yourself, but you really, when you take care of yourself, you really have emotional energy that you can share. You know, and you really kind of, there's a real synergy that, you know, one plus one equals 11 and not just two kind of thing. So we're feeling that a lot in our marriage. That's great. So good. Yeah. Tim, you sound like a, a wonderful husband and the kind, you have the kind of relationship that everyone wants to have. So what is your tip for women that are listening to this show and they're wanting to know, like, how can I have what Tim and Sandy have where he looks forward to seeing her and there's feels like there's all this emotional safety and you're feeling empowered and proud of how you can please your wife. And um, it sounds like the intimacy is good there. Uh, what, how, what's your best tip for her? What could she do? Well, I, uh, so here's what comes to mind immediately on that. Um, so part of her magic, and I don't know what, program or which one of these skills it comes into, but it's like her expectations of me have been reduced or eliminated. And it's like giving me, you know, from feeling smothered or uh, claustrophobic to feeling like I've got, I've got air to breathe. You know, I, I, I you know, it's like, it's like the, it, it, it charged the air in a way that I don't, and, and it's not just her, it's, it's my interpretation, but I'm just saying from her, you know, it's just, you know, you want your husband, you know exactly what you want your husbands to be, but I don't, my understanding of your program is you, you, don't, you know, you can desire things and there's, you know, uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of concepts I use in my coaching with, you know, business owners and that, that type of thing. Uh, you know, but it's, it's like, um, I'm, I'm not guessing what she wants and I'm, you know, I, I'm guessing right or wrong and I'm on trial without knowing it. Men feel like they're on trial a lot with those expectations through a look or, a gesture or a certain thing that said, um, we either do a fight or flight. And so a lot of guys will, will flight. They'll just come in and they'll go into a cave and they'll say, Hey, see you later. You know, I don't need this and, uh, see you later. So by Sandy lowering her expectations, it really gave me room for me to, you know, to, uh, to breathe and to operate and to, and to, and to, to initiate and be intentional on in how I wanted to live my life, how I wanted to show up with her. That, is that helpful? That. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great answer. There's one, there's one, there's one thing that I wanted to say though, just, you know, the lower the expectations, if there's one thing that I can, 
Another thing for women on this whole gratitude thing that Sandy does. Early on, uh, you know, it, you know, we, you know, the stumbling through things was more frequently. It's less now. And, uh, but I remember we had this anniversary dinner. I talked, took her to her favorite, one of her favorite places. And I got her a, um, a gift and, uh, then she got me a gift and, um, it was a book. I, I love books. I love to read, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, but it looks like a photo ad. I go, okay, what's this? And so I opened this up and she had for about three months prior to that. And this is before she's telling me all the stuff that she's learning, you know, she's practicing it. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Um, and, uh, it was emotional. It was 58 pages of specific things she was grateful towards me about. Huh. I had this, I'm not a tear guy. I'm, you know, you got this magic here and I, I don't know if I like it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I started flipping through there and just began to, in the restaurant, just began to weep. And it's just like, wow, you know? And so to do gratitude by faith, especially when you feel like you're married to an old clod that you know, was another bull in a china cabinet and has got the emotional skill of a three-year-old, you know, or whatever you'd want to say. So, you know, it's like, uh, first of all, men are very emotional. They just don't express it as, as openly. But just that gratitude that she chooses to operate in and that gift that she gave me, it was just like, it was just went deep into my heart, just in healing things and just, and that, so, I know she's for me and not against me. You know, it's really, really big. Yeah. So that if if your guy can feel like you're for him, even when he's a jerk, even when he makes a mistake, even when he makes you madder than a hornet, which doesn't happen to your women, but other women that haven't gone through your training yet, you know. So uh, just that gratitude is just so powerful. So. Oh, that story is a very powerful story. So moving. You made me cry too. And Tim, I just love all the wisdom and uh, insights that we got to see. I uh, got a front row seat too uh, from your wonderful sharing. You're uh, so authentic today. I just can't thank you enough for all the the value you brought uh, and the and the contribution to ending world divorce uh, by inspiring us all. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, the courage you've took you've you've taken at every stretch of stretch of the way, and just writing those books and enduring uninformed people's criticism, and just um, what you did in that lonely place of writing and getting this revelation out clearly uh has healed our marriage so thank you thank you so much tim this has been uh i'm so happy i feel so good thank you for making my day um yeah i'm gonna have a spring in my step for probably a couple of days at least <laughs> so thank you so much thank you have you fixed a problem in your marriage big or small using the six intimacy skills if so, I would love to hear all about it and have you as a guest on the Empowered Wife podcast. If you're willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce and pay it forward by inspiring other women with your story, go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. And let me know that you're willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce. I can't wait to meet you. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, I'm going to share three traits to attract your husband effortlessly. And in the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. 
Today's fun fact is that I put out some fruit decor in the entryway, and John asked, are those lemons real? And when I said no, he said, that's too bad. I, I ate a few. 